tuning into the Facebook uh, for Dementia UK. Um, my name's Dave Bell, I'm one of the Admiral Nurses, um, I work on the Direct Health Line, and Sarah Richardson, who uh, is, one, is an occupational therapist that mm. works alongside us at Dementia UK supporting us. So, um, thank you ever so much for, for tuning in. I hope for the next 15 minutes or so we were able to give you um, some tips around, around uh, baking. Uh, we've got Time for a Cuppa, which is the Dementia UK annual fundraising event coming up next week, starting on 1st of March. That's right, um, till the 8th. Until the 8th. So um, I ho we hope all around the country people will be ho holding events um, using using baking, eating cakes, having tea parties, mm -hmm. and raising funds mm -hmm. to support Admiral Nurses um, across the country. Um, so. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's just been lovely seeing your interest on the on the Facebook page, and it sounds like actually a lot of you are already enjoying um, the benefits of baking um, with people living with dementia and family. Um, so really, this video we hope it will give you some more tips. Um, we can't cover everything because we're on a bit of a tight time scale, um, but we will follow up with um, a blog with some links and websites um, so that you'll be able to um, follow up what we've been talking about tonight. Um, I think before we start, it's probably important to just recognise that everybody living with dementia is, is really individual um, and any activity ha has to really be matched with what someone can do. So we can't make specific recommendations, but we're going to give you some general ideas and we hope they're going to be useful for you. I think so. I think, I think the idea is to give you some tips mm. that you can apply, but knowing the person is the most important thing and you, you, you know the person you're caring for or... You know, you you mm. you have your own particular it, it, um, ways of doing things, so and your own particular kitchens as well. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. Um, not everything we do here is going to be applicable. <laughs> no, quite. Okay. But if you do have any more questions, you know, please do just put them on the Facebook page. We'd really love to hear from you, um, and yeah, try and help answer any questions you have. I think we should probably kick should off. We, should we kick off? Yeah. The first, I mean, the first question that we received was from uh, someone who was saying that their mother unfortunately was forgetting how to bake um, due to the progress of her dementia and it's something that she loves and um, how can they continue to bake together mm. which is which is important I think that together is really important mm. because it's not about setting a task and hoping that the person can still do the things they do so um, keep, yeah. keep that idea of together going on and I think the first thing to do is to sort of if you like take a step back um, if you've got an uh, and a plan for an activity in the kitchen of baking, mm -hmm. then start a little bit before that and start by making the per reducing the person's stress. It might not just be about memory, it might be about self-confidence, self-esteem, um, uh, concentration, mm -hmm. uh, making sense of things as Visually, well. Visually, they might not be able to see. Yeah. So make sure you've got the person's trust and, and they feel safe with you, which is, which is really important. Uh, you can do that in many ways, and uh, one is um, maybe even having some some lovely aromas, as there are in this kitchen, um, <laughs> to to make someone yeah. stimulated and and, um, and get, get on track. That there's a cooking activity coming up. So, yeah. Um, and and then when you come into the kitchen, if you can coax the person to come into the kitchen, mm. um, don't put too much um, uh, res responsibility on them, if you like, but but in, involve them. Do it together. And, uh, and have everything laid out. Definitely, yeah. So no. it's, it's all prepared, ready when you come in. You're not rushing off to get more eggs, or you've forgotten to buy enough sugar, enough icing sugar, or something like that. Yeah. So get, yeah, get get that all planned out first. And Definitely, I think having you know things weighed out already is really helpful. You don't want anything that's complicated. You know, really encourage you to keep things simple. Um, it may be that. Um, your mum or your wife is, you know, no longer able to make that amazing wedding cake that they, they used to make, but they will be able to engage with some part of, of baking. And it's just working out what that is. And it might just be a case of just trial and error. Um, you know, the, the joy is around just doing it together rather than the end product. The cake might not turn out great. Um, but, but it stimulates <laughs> conversations as well. And I think, you know, that, yeah. um, uh, the the idea that you you can actually mm. remember the, the, the recipes that your mother your mother used to make. I mean, my, my mother used to make a marble cake, and, mm. and that's something that when she thinks about it, she'll remember that. You yeah, know? Yeah. Um, so we can we can you, know, you can use the conversations that are going on. 
use the the scent, all the senses as well. Smells, yeah. um, you know, a, a lemon can can be a, a, a real sharp kind of yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, engaging no, uh, uh, tool. Um, feel the f feel of the feel of an egg. You know, mm. Um, mm. sorry, I'm, I'm using all your no, your no, no, not and, at all. And, if, if there's mixing or kneading yeah. to be done, then that's really good and tactile really get your hands as well. In there. Yeah. And you can do that together. You know, that's something that you can put your hands over each other's and just enjoy that, that tactile experience. What I was going to just pick up around what you're saying about being organised and having things laid out. Um, you may want to just keep things in, in clear jars because you can see what's in there. You don't have to rummage around in your baking cupboard. Um, you might want to put a label on it to make it easier. And you might want to label your cupboards even so that... Um, you know, you can navigate your way around the kitchen a little bit easier. Um, something that I found helpful when actually um, baking with people living with dementia is around um, some of the equipment, as we call it, or a bowl, you know, try and use one that, that perhaps is in a contrasting colour to the worktop. Um, particularly for people who perhaps have visual difficulties as well, it's really helpful to be able to actually see what, what you're doing and what you're working with. Um, and it may be, you know, that the, the wooden spoon, someone's able to enjoy just stirring. It may be that they want to just get their hands in and touch. Um, it may be that you actually have to scrap that part and use an electric whisk. You know, you're going to have to perhaps adapt how you're used to doing things, and that's really what this is about. It's yeah. doing things differently, and that's okay. And even even mm. if, if, you know, I, we said about giving someone some bits of the process yeah. to make, if they're not able to follow through the whole, the whole process, there's so many... Um, different, Elements, you break down. You break down. A, even making a cup of tea, you've got about sixteen yeah. different steps. So, but it, cutting a <laughs> cutting a lemon up. <laughs> is it thirty-five? Okay. okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That you can get um, uh, aids and adaptations that will actually help with that. I know on yeah. the Unforgettable website, you'll yeah, find yeah. a pair of gloves that are easy to use, but will will protect people from being cut if they're actually cutting things. So. Um, there is equipment out there, isn't there? And I think someone had asked actually on the Facebook page, um, someone's mother who was having difficulty with um, picking up the kettle, and obviously with time for a cuppa, um, making a cup of tea is really important. Um, and what I would say, you know, see if you can get a travel kettle, something a little bit lighter, um, but you can also get something called a kettle tipper, and it's something that you um, put your kettle in and you just tip yeah. it, so you don't have to worry about someone walking around the kitchen with the kettle any lifting so for someone perhaps with weaker wrists um i'd really recommend looking at that and i'll leave that in the blog just as well i think one, another question that we had was mm. was about someone who again whose wife is is no longer able to take part in the activities really but yeah. she still enjoys the uh, being there and, and 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 used to bake really well and i think even with someone in later stages of dementia you can you can involve them in the activity if they if you're doing something and they're in the room and uh, you can engage them and make them feel they're part of it, um, just by eye contact, by by laughing, yeah. by showing things, by getting mm. people to smell, um, they they can still feel that they're, they're, they're very much part of what's going on. So um, much as well of what we do, and you know, around baking, it's for some people it's a massive sense of who they are and identity and gives you purpose, doesn't it? Yeah. What, what we do, and so it's really important to keep holding on to that. I mean, I think so many of the, the, the older women, I mean, mm. people in the 70s and 80s, were, were perhaps not professionals, but they, they, they managed they were, the house, you know. And we were, yeah. talking, we were talking earlier on about how people did home economics at school. Yeah. So the, the idea is that, um, you know, we learned how, women especially, learned how to cook. Blokes didn't, so I think, you know, often uh, we're giving advice and sons and husbands may, may find it not so easy and have to uh, have to watch maybe a, a, in one of the TV programs about, about <laughs> learning learning to bake to help um, uh, actually do some of the the, the baking themselves. Um, mm, definitely. As we said, it, it, it all fails and, and the, the cake doesn't make it. Then you you can always get one out outside in the shop and bring it in. But it's the process it of the it, process. and I think that's the most important thing is the is the fun to be had from it. Absolutely, and something about you know enjoying even if you haven't been involved at all with making a cake, you know, enjoying having a, a, a piece of cake together in a cuppa, yeah. just enjoying that experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next question. Next qu the next question that came in, um, and please do get some questions into us. We haven't got that long, but please do <laughs> try and get some in. Was, it was about someone who, um, who was living with dementia themselves, and they were asking about how um, they, they 
that could carry on baking safely in the kitchen, um, mm. even though they were alone in the house. It might be when their wife is at work. And, uh, and we've got some tips for that as well, I think. Yeah. But the first yeah. thing is to plan ahead, really, isn't it, Sarah? Yeah. And, and just make sure that you that you, you're you thinking, plan you're thinking when ahead you want you know to do things. Yeah. I mean, the kitchen, as we all know, is an absolute warren of, of hazards. Um, and there, there's lots, you know, that we can all worry about. Um, and to the person, I think it was Mel who, who who wrote that message to us. I really encourage you to keep keep baking and doing what you love. It's just how we slightly adapt things so that you can do this safely. Um, with gas, there are a couple of things that you can do. Um, the, the top thing would be cut your gas off, um, but you can also have a sort of gas um, shut off valve fitted that would shut it off if the gas was leaking or the gas was left on but unlit. Um, you can get uh, heat sensors if things are getting too hot, um, and hopefully you already have a smoke and alarm. And, alarm, and, and, and a, a, actual detector. alarm, alarm clock, an oven alarm, or something like that yeah. that will make a noise. It's easy to, I think, you, you, it's easy to get distracted doing something else in the if you put something in the oven, you can easily get you know, you know, carried away and get involved in that. Thing. Keep distractions to a minimum. Mm, I mean, yeah. that's that's often when we we get distracted. Isn't I it? think it's about breaking down. You mentioned it before, mm. though, about breaking down a task, mm. writing down for yourself at the beginning of it what you're going to do, how how, how much butter, how much how many eggs, whatever, mm. and at what time you're going to do it, and just try and stick to that. It's a, you know, it's difficult, but it's about structure and, it and just trying yeah. to to you know, um, uh, keep keep to a to a, a pattern, if you like, over, over a, it's, it'll take half an hour, 45 minutes, but yeah, yeah, um, no, of course. stick to it. I mean, one um, suggestion I might have, Mel, is that you, you know, you, there may be an option for you to, to have an electric, um, for a first, a lot safer. Um, if not, you can get the little electric rings that you might take camping, so it's a lot cheaper. Um, but also, you know, you mentioned your wife and, and baking together, so perhaps you could do that at the weekends. Um, and then leave yourself some tasks which don't involve heat and gas for the end of the week, whether that's icing, you know, and doing some of those um, tasks that are a lot, lot safer. Because um, we really want to encourage you to keep keep active. It's really, really important as well. Do we have another question? Lovely. Thank you. You've got a question? Yeah. Um, should, should you? No. you yeah, we've gone. Yeah. <laughs> should I encourage my relative with dementia to bake with me, even if they've never baked before? Well, I, I, I think yes. I think it's... It, it, you know, even if they've never baked before, they might not be. It might not be something they're the, they're used to doing. They might might not have memories about it. Mm. But it's an activity that can be a lot of fun. If you like if you like baking yourself, then or you're you know you, you're going to come up with something that you can share and eat together. Then you're doing something with with the person who um, who is just going to be involved with you. And all those. I mean, the set. I talked before about the senses involved and yeah, the yeah. smells. I mean, one of the things that I, I yeah. just can I just very yeah. briefly get this across? This is a set of, um, of cards that you can get. Um, uh, they're called reminisce, reminiscent cards, so they're smell cards. And you can get them on um, uh, the Unforgettable website. Um, they're you, they peel back and you can smell the Victoria sponge in this case. And uh, that might be something that you could actually um, have, a, have a go, see yeah. what you think about Victoria's Punch. Um, and there's lots of, lots of questions you can ask someone, lots of reminiscence oh. about baking. Yeah. Do you think it smelled like a, a Do you know Victoria's Punch? I smell strawberry. I don't know whether I'm getting the... Well, you've, you're getting getting the, the, you've got the jam the middle, in the middle, yeah. <laughs> um, but they're, they're, they're really good ways of engaging someone. Um, but the, the smells of cooking... The, the feel of cooking and and the the achievement of it. I, I bet even if they they not they haven't cooked yeah. before, they like eating. Absolutely, and that's, that's something to work towards. As well. I think as well, Dave. We had someone um, comment on the page whose whose husband um, recently moved into a nursing home and had never I don't think set foot in the kitchen in something like sixty years of marriage, and actually in the nursing home had really enjoyed baking fat jacks. Uh, you know, much surprise to his wife and probably to him as well, but. Don't ever underestimate, you know, what people living with dementia can can do and what they might enjoy. Try it; it's okay. I think don't put pressure on them. Mm. But, um, but one of the main the main points about activity with someone living with dementia is to try and reduce stress, um, en engage them, help them exercise, if you like, physically and socially. Stimulation, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. isn't it? It's just and, and this is about active. fun. Uh, we we can we can still have fun at whatever age we are. 
and, uh, and um, in, in enjoying an activity together. So it, it will make you feel better as the, as the carer to, to, you know, to have done something um, that, that achieves something as well and you can eat together. Absolutely. So. Yeah, no, definitely. I, yeah, to the person who asks us that, definitely, please do. Please encourage, uh, encourage your relative. <laughs> definitely. Um, I'm going to check on my biscuits. Yes, yeah, on my do, biscuits. do. And I, I think this, we've got um, one more. Um, oh, yes, there was one more question about whether, whether advanced dementia... Has, an, has a, um, an impact on people's ability to taste, to, well, to eat food, to have their appetite and their ability to taste. And yes, it does. And um, it's different for everyone, of course, and, and uh, Sarah's already said that. But I think in later stages of dementia, people do often lose appetite. Um, they'll change their, their, the things they like to eat as well. So you might find someone who never really used to eat sweet things now wants more and more sweet things or you know, yeah. three sugars in the tea rather than, than none sweet at all. Sweet things, that seems things. to be quite common, doesn't it, yeah. actually? We do lose, I mean, we lose taste buds as we get older anyway, so old age is about, about making up for lost senses gradually, isn't it? But, um, but I think that, you know, that, that things will change, but don't be put out. Keep looking for what the person will like to eat and don't worry too much. And we just, make, just try and encourage yeah. as many things as they like. Um, look around. Yeah, and I think that's what, you know, we referred early, earlier to kind of getting to know the person and what's what's important to them, what do they like, what do they like eating, um, what's their favourite food. Um, try and start from that point, I think. You've got you've got some lovely things here as well. You've got an old an old recipe book. I have. This, this was actually my great granny, and it's from 1921. And I have so much fun looking at some of these these recipes and so mock kidney soup um, <laughs> yeah and some of the little cutouts that are, that are from the paper but actually just this is a lovely activity in itself you know with with your loved ones looking at old recipe books and seeing what was the food of the times what yeah. what was yeah. popular in rations you know what could people actually buy um, half, half an ounce of butter a yeah. week <laughs> yeah. um, and that, i mean that's it's something that can can result in lots of other conversations as well. So it's, you know, you, you've got um, you've got so much that you can get from that. Um, keep keep a diary as well because I think that it's really important if you if you do find out someone's likes and dislikes, then making sure that you know what they are mm. for the future as well. This is really important in care homes Absolutely. if you can add to someone's life story book or yeah. life history book, or whatever you've got by finding out new things about them. Um, and you, you build, you gradually build a bigger picture of, of what they're going to enjoy and what you can cook next time. <laughs> it's time for us to eat some more. I think so. You, <laughs> yeah, uh, but I guess um, what we're, our main message is probably around, you know, have fun, enjoy. It might be actually looking at a recipe book. It might be smelling a cake in the oven. It might be sieving flour. Um, yeah. And it yeah. might be... Need, needing Need bread, it. you know, uh, whatever, you, the, the, the things that we can do. And they, they will result in um, sensory stimulation, in engagement with the person, in, in reminiscence and in laughter, in Absolutely. fun. So, so you know, you, you'll achieve, carry, carry on cooking. Absolutely, and I guess, yeah, for make you? time for a cuppa. Absolutely, and we hope you'll join us with your tea party and enjoy your... Uh, oh, it's warm. It's warm. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that's... All from us. Fantastic. Well, yeah, thank you very much and, and enjoy, enjoy the time for a couple of weeks.